Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkripi and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, new mobile app to enhance government services. Two former WAF staff face major corruption charges. An accused murderer claims victim beat her and her children. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. Fijians can now contact government ministries via new mobile application launched by Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama today. Mbaini Marama says the app called Digital Fiji is a major milestone that brings digital revolution to all Fijians. Anna Rabulo with the details. A first of its kind, the Digital Fiji app will provide a more personal platform between Fijians and the government. It has a lot of exciting potential that's going to make a real difference in the lives of our people. And today is only the start of our work to transform the way Fijians engage with each other and with their government. And through digital Fiji, Fijians will be able to access, access the, the style of leadership directly in the palm of their hands. And uh, their voices can now affect change in the day-to-day -day lives more quickly and conveniently than ever before. The app not only includes context to all government entities, but also feedback on any issues that's of concern. The idea is to bring Fijians, their concerns and their ideas to the forefront of our development. In that way, this program will grow to become a pillar in our democracy, a bridge between Fijians and their government. This has been made possible with the partnership of the government of Singapore. The Digital Fiji program aims to provide a holistic approach to support Fiji in realizing its goal towards a digital government. When submitting a feedback, you're given a tracking number to see its progress. The app is available to all Android phones and will be available to iPhones in a few weeks' time. Anna Rovulo, FBC News. Two former Water Authority staff are among three people charged in an alleged scam involving over $330,000. They appeared in the Suva Magistrate's Court this afternoon. Former Land Acquisition Officer Laisiasa Valesu faces two counts of abuse of office, two counts of forgery and one count of obtaining a financial advantage, while former Assistant Project Manager Vilimaina Kalokalo is charged with one count of abuse of office. Pranita Prakash reports the third, Pauliasi Simeone, is charged with one count of aiding and abetting. Paikek alleges that the offences took place over a three-year period between June 2013 and May 2016 when Laisiasa Valesu facilitated the processing of false payments of $334,496 S claims for crop and land compensation for the Manukau 5G project and Nambukalo project. He allegedly forged false crop compensation form and easement agreements as genuine claims to obtain the money. He also allegedly obtained $13,348 by processing false payments for crop compensation for the Pineapple Sivrash project. The second accused, Vilimena Kalo Kalo, allegedly facilitated that false payment. It is alleged that the third accused, Poliasi Simeone, aided and abetted Valesu in committing the offence. All three have been granted bail with strict conditions. The Suva magistrate will rule next Wednesday on whether to transfer the matter to the High Court after the three opted to have the case heard in the magistrate's court. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Suva High Court this afternoon heard testimony from Mary Ann Pramila Devi that her de facto partner, Bal Krishna Naidu, was a difficult and violent man. Rachel Nath reports Devi, charged with one count of murder, took the stand in her own defence. Devi told the court that Naidu often hit her and her three daughters. She said she reported the violence to the police and her church, which advised her to forgive him. She testified that on the day of the incident, she was at work until 6 p.m. and returned home to find the house in a mess. Devi's eldest daughter informed her that Naidu and some friends had been drinking alcohol during the day. The accused told the court that before going to work, she had given Naidu $150 to repair the Texas broken windscreen. However, he used the money to buy alcohol. 
She also discovered there was no kerosene left as Naidu had given it to the neighbor. She testified this wasn't the first such incident and she decided to leave Naidu, but he tried to stop her by blocking the door. Devi claimed she then poured the leftover kerosene from the stove on him, thinking that would cause him to move away from the door, but he refused to. Meanwhile, senior pathologist Daniela John told the court that Naidu sustained extensive second and third degree burns to 80% of his body, which led to his death. The trial continues tomorrow. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The Education Ministry has announced the 2019 school terms will include seven student free days set aside for teachers prior to the commencement of each school term. These compulsory student free days will enable head teachers, principals and teachers to organize professional development sessions, prepare lesson plans and notes among other activities. Students will begin classes on Monday instead of Tuesday as has been the practice in the past. The first school term of 2019 will begin on January 14th. Still to come, military man talks about life-saving moment and 1,400 dispute cases received by Labor's Mediation Services Unit. Stay with us. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the wrong and bullet. Number two, I am a serial. Oya, was it says a lambasa, and the teletain of a Roman and Bula FM, number two and serial. We have a Timeli, a Kanatau no Hina Toka, Teletakina of a Roman and Bula FM, number two and a serial. Never go find in a town and go sing a toka, get on the Teletakan and Bula FM, number two and a serial. Bula FM, number two and a serial. The Sugar Research Institute of Fiji now has a full complement of board members. Prime Minister of Warenge Mbaini Marama has reappointed Professor Rajesh Chandra as the chair. Other new appointments include two soil scientists and the recently appointed chief executive for the Growers Fund. Permanent Secretary in the Prime Minister's office, Yogesh Karan, says the priority for the board will be to accelerate research and development into increasing Fijian sugar yields. New CEO for uh, sugar uh, fund and uh, it's Raj Sharma, so he will be taking up his appointment effective today. He's been appointed. Um, uh, Mr. Raj Sharma has been appointed the CEO for Sugarcane Growers Fund. The Mediation Services Unit within the Labor Ministry received 1,400 dispute cases by the end of last year. The Ministry presented their submissions on a three-year annual report to the Parliamentary Standing Committee of Natural Resources. Mediator Tomasi Kenny revealed the number of cases referred to the Mediation Services has increased since its establishment in 2008. Since we started in 2008, uh, we received about uh, 186 cases, especially on the employment grievance. But uh, by the end of 2017, uh, the, the number of cases we received in mediation has gone up to about 1,400. So, and so the, the workers are aware of their rights. Hundreds of Fijian Defence Forces personnel have been deployed to Lebanon since peacekeeping duties first started in 1987. Out of these deployments, stories have emerged of bravery, dedication, sacrifice, camaraderie, pain, loss and hardship. Eleanor Tarangaviu has more. A naval shell throws flak over cars making a run for it. An Israeli warship at sea shelling at random. April 1996, the Israeli Defense Force waged a 16-day campaign known as the Grapes of Wrath against Lebanon in an attempt to end the shelling of northern Israel by Hezbollah. Our Fijian troops deployed in Lebanon at the time were caught in the crossfire. I was on duty as the operation clerk that day when the selling occurred. Suddenly the selling was directed into our location, the headquarters of Fiji Bed, killing more than 100 locals, mainly women and children. While none of the Fijian troops were injured in the bombing, Staff Sergeant Chotami Seli put his life on the line to save a wounded five-year-old Lebanese girl. I managed to reach her and carry her. She was crying for help. PG, PG. 18th April 1996 is a date carved in the mind of Staff Sergeant Selly forever, the day he came face to face with death. Before we reached the bomb shelter, a fragment cut through 
her body into half. I was shocked and surprised that I was carrying her upper body only. My flap jacket and uniform was soaked with her blood, tears flowing from my eyes. 26905 Staff Sergeant Chotami Seli was awarded the badge of Grapes of Wrath for that brave action. His story was featured during the 40th anniversary of Fiji's participation in UN peacekeeping operations in Lombasa yesterday. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. Individuals and organizations that have performed outstandingly will be recognized during the Fiji Human Resources Institute Awards that will be held on Saturday at the Pearl Resort. The Institute received 25 applications for the awards. President Kameli Mbatiweti says all applications were thoroughly scrutinized by evaluators who also interviewed the chief executives to ensure correct information is provided. Awards will be given in six categories compared to three last year. You have in the human resources fraternity, you have some who are general manager of human resources, director of human resources, and so we added another category there to ensure that we capture a wider range. In sports later with Jamie, Spain football sacks its manager ahead of the FIFA World Cup, but up next is Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Booming TV sales ahead of FIFA World Cup. And in growing Fiji, more than 30 PRB lots to be developed in Lotoka. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coral Coast, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote, I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigger, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In our business segment tonight, now with the FIFA World Cup starting early tomorrow morning, television sets have become one of the hottest commodities for the football faithfuls. It has been in such a high demand that a distributor has recorded sales to those never seen before. Catherine Krishna has more. The World Cup is classed as the mother of all sporting events around the globe and it is only fitting for many to watch the action on the best platform. Television screens is amongst that platform and the demand in Fiji for new sets is unprecedented. FIFA World Cup uh, fever, it's a very good testimony because the number of TVs that we have sold is a very good testimony to say that, uh, you know, the FIFA World Cup fever is already on in Fiji. And uh, as I said before, the Hisense brand quality and the affordability have, you know, have moved the numbers for us. Fijians say they are ready to watch and enjoy the 21st FIFA World Cup and most have purchased new screens. Well, I'm buying 55-inch TV to watch World Cup and my favorite team is Brazil. I'm buying a 55-inch TV, a 55 -inch TV uh, to see a FIFA World Cup. Coach of a wide range of TV. Uh, I'll buy one TV from here to cheer for my team, which is Germany. The 2018 FIFA World Cup starts tomorrow, whereby Saudi Arabia will take on Russia, and you can watch the match live on FBC TV. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Seven new outbound countries have been included in Vodafone for their roaming services for both postpay and prepay customers in a bid to provide wider services to the public. Vodafone Fiji Chief Operating Officer Ronald Prasad says Russia is one of the seven new countries. He says the addition has been made at a perfect time for customers traveling to watch the FIFA World Cup being held in Russia. Customers who are outbound to go and watch the Soccer World Cup will be able to stay connected with their friends and family and also in preparation for the uh, inaugural flight from Fiji Airways to Japan. We've managed to negotiate and get Japan in the list as well. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Looking at the economic headlines, the U.S. Federal Reserve raised its interest rate by 25 basis points to 2% this morning, citing an improved outlook for the American economy. 
With the Fed now out of the way, investors look to the European Central Bank, which will decide its rates later tonight. While no change is expected, investors are bracing for news of a potential end to the region's quantitative easing program. Closer to home, Australia's unemployment rate ticked lower to 5.4% in May, even though the economy added 12,000 jobs. The decline in the unemployment rate reflected a decline in labor force participation, which fell to 65.5%. And that's all for now. Binaka. Thanks, Sharon. Taking a look at today's currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Despite the overnight increase in the U.S. interest rates, the Fiji dollar rose against the American dollar, the uh, Aussie dollar, the PNG Kina and the Japanese yen and was slightly down against the other currencies we cover. Looking at the commodities market, oil was on the rise at 66.60 a barrel. Gold was up as well to close at 1,300 an ounce and silver was up to close at 17.08 an ounce. And in Growing Fiji tonight, groundworks for the public rental board flats in similar Latoka continue following the official groundbreaking ceremony today. Once completed, the similar housing project will assist low-income earning families who want to own a home. Philip and Acaso has more. Good news for Lotoka families looking to own a house. The PRB housing flats being developed in Simla will be available soon. If you want to have a lot and buy a new house for you, please go and register yourself at Housing Authority Lotoka office. There's a lot of lots coming in. It will be affordable and you can own a lot. With work still underway, the PRB has received applications from Fijians wanting to own lots here in Simla. For the Western Division alone, we have uh, over 100 applications waiting. Uh, we have a demand survey that we had done uh, initially, which uh, we thought that uh, there is a need to develop further in, in the Western Division. One of the requirements for application is that a family has to earn below $16,000. 36 families will take up these PRB flats once it's completed, which will take at least one year. The total cost of the project comes in at 3.6 million Fijian dollars. Philip and I, Castle, FBC News. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, local fans make preparations for World Cup. And Simiran Randra ready to make his debut. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. Singapore is number one. I'm Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock Sing Lambasa. I'm Sonami, Nasodi Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Bubble Singer Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. With just a few hours before the opening of the 2018 FIFA World Cup and some fans in Fiji have plans all set for how they will watch and support their teams over the next month. Some French and Belgians in Suva put on their national colours today to welcome the beginning of their team's World Cup journeys. Meli Tavanga caught up with a few of them this morning and filed this report. Allez la France! Go France! They may be far away from their homeland, but the love of football remains in their hearts. We have a very strong squad, not to underestimate the opposition, because this is, uh, there is no easy group in, uh, in the pool stage of uh, the FIFA World Cup. French fans have set up plans on how they will watch France take on Australia in its opening World Cup campaign. Organizing a big party at my place and inviting as many people as I can 
and uh, we will put this in a big screen and uh, everyone is welcome to watch uh, with uh, the victory of the friends. FBC Sports also caught up with few Belgians who also can't wait to see the heroes in action next week. Extremely excited. I want them to go to the demi-final or to the final. Hazard is my uh, favorite uh, player and uh, I would like to see also Fellaini who has a very specific style with his long hair, uh, curly hair and uh, yeah. They've also planned a get-together early Tuesday morning to support their team. Definitely get together. We are like six, seven, and we will all have, uh, but it will be at night, so it will be quite difficult, but we will do it. Belgium will try and impress their fans this year, while France is tagged as one of the favorites to win the World Cup title. Don't be surprised, this house will definitely turn white, blue, and red. Belitavanga, FBC Sports. Spain has no time to dwell on the sacking of coach Julian Lopetegui, says temporary replacement Fernando Yero. England held its first training session in Russia at St. Petersburg Spartak Stadium, but forward Marcus Rashford set the session out due to a slight knee strain. Rashford was the only absentee as England trained on Wednesday for the first time since arriving in Russia. The Manchester United striker picked up a minor knock in England's final training session at home. Rashford's injury makes it even more likely that Raheem Sterling will replace him alongside Harry Kane in England's opener. Very excited. Um, we've had some really good games prior to this and we've done well and we're getting better every day. So I'm um, really happy. We're very confident. We've got a very good group of players, a very young group of players, players that want to succeed, that want to do really well um, and have a really good chemistry. So we, we, believe, we believe we can do very well. Um, we'll take one game at a time and, and do as well as we can. The 2018 FIFA World Cup kicks off tomorrow morning and for 32 days the football world will take over Russia. 64 matches will take place over 12 venues in 11 cities as 32 teams fight for the right to be named the champions of the world. But as TVNZ reports, there are some security concerns and political tensions. Less than nine months since playing his last match in the NRL and the now France-based Toulon winger, Semi Randrandra has been named for his debut in the Fiji Airways Flying Fijians against Georgia on Saturday. The star rugby player is excited about his first appearance in the national side and honored that it's in front of his home crowd. Vasil Prasad reports. Working on a familiar territory, French top 14 star Semi Randrandra is ready to end his first care for the Flying Fijians. I always want to um, wanna play uh, for Flying Fiji as I play 15. But uh, a yeah, huge honor, honor and privilege for me uh, to be selected and play um, this test and uh, play do my best this week. Randrandra will partner with Charlie Vatambua in the midfield and he has been working hard with the back line to get the right combinations. Uh, we've been working hard uh, for the whole uh, this week. Uh, we've been <coughs> trying to sort uh, some, um, uh, some different to change um, um, our attacks. Coach John McKee says he's impressed on how Randrandra has been responding during training. Semis, you know, quickly got up to speed with all our plays and, you know, the, the backs have been spending time away from the, from the training field, you know, around the camp with um, meetings and looking at video. Fiji takes on Georgia in its second Pacific Nations Cup match Saturday at 3.30pm in Suva's ANZ Stadium. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. We'll cross live now to Vasil Prasad, who's with Flying Fijians coach John McKee at their base camp, to tell us more on the match day team. Vasil. An exciting squad has been named uh, ahead of the game against Georgia. And uh, there's some exciting names coming up. First of all, as you heard, Semiran Randra is making his debut. Coach, here with me, John McKee. Coach, Semi making his debut. How's the feeling in camp? And probably one of the strongest players to be included in the 15s team? Yeah, well, certainly, you know, Semi's uh, been a lot of talk about Semi in, in recent times, and he's had a great season up in Europe. And, yeah, I think he's, and he's really looking forward to making his debut for the, for the Flying Fijians on our home turf here in Fiji. And also looking at the squad, Nemani Nandolo uh, has been named. Earlier you told us that uh, his weight is a problem, but uh, now he has met the requirement so far to be in the starting lineup. Oh, look, you know, Nemani, I'd like to see him a few kilos lighter, but, you know, it's good to see Nemani back after, you know, a really good season with Montpellier, and, and we want to see him bring some of that form to, to ANZ Stadium on Saturday. Knowing Georgians will be powerful in the front row in the forwards, you have named another new cap, uh, Ratu Bunagoto, in the up front, probably his big uh, game and debut season. 
Oh, look, great opportunity for for to vary there, and I really think he must be really looking forward to, to making his debut start in um, in a test match, such an important test match for the flying Fijians, because you know it's really this performance against uh, Georgia really really important um, for the Pacific Nations Cup, but also with a view towards Rugby World Cup. Knowing Georgia have beaten Fiji here at ANZ Stadium in 2016, 14-3 was the point this year. You might have an idea of what they will have on their bags here in front of the home crowd. Oh, look, I think we, there's no doubt about the way um, Georgia will, will approach the game and, and they'll be looking to use their, you know, their powerful, strong forwards, but, but their, their backs as well. I think, you know, I see that, you know, their back division is, is getting better and better all the time. But, but they're, they're, they'll be formidable opponents, but, I'm, you know, I'm confident that, that, that our players will really be up to the task to, to take on their, their forward pack and, and around the... Around the around the set pieces and, and in the, the driving close in game and, and for, for us, you know, we'll need to we'll need to be on top of our game there to have any opportunity to, to set our backs free. There you go, Jamie. Don't forget Semi Randrandra, one of the most valuable players play in France, will be here playing in front of our home crowd and fans. What a time to watch the stars here just at our home. Jamie. Thanks, much, Neil. Now, the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation is backing the annual Super Marathon again. That's now into its fifth year. The event attracted over 1,300 participants last year, including 50 international runners. And this year, the Super Marathon Club expects more participants. We have a brand new Hyundai Grand I-10, worth $30,000, uh, with sponsorship of Carpenters Motors. Any participant who registers and completes either the 10 kilometer, 21 kilometer, or 42 kilometer event goes in the draw to win. Already over 50, uh, sorry, 30 uh, international participants have registered, so we uh, expect to beat the mark of 50 from last year. St. Joseph Secondary School student Jane Smith will represent Fiji for the first time at the Oceania Swimming Championships at the end of the month in PNG. The 15 year old hopes to improve her time at the competition. Luciana Tangedakimba reports. Year 10, James Smith is ready to take up a new challenge to compete against top swimmers from around the region. I'm nervous to be competing, but I think it's a good opportunity for me to push myself and see how far I can go to better my times and improve on my, my recent times. Smith says she will do her best as she represents the country later this month. It was uh, a surprise because I didn't expect to. I trained hard to uh, be a part of the team and it was uh, a great honor and privilege to be chosen. Meanwhile, 14-year-old Hefu Erasito says he will use the competition as a build-up for the Pacific Games next year. Get uh, good PBs and uh, try my best to qualify for the Pacific Games next year. 22 swimmers have been selected to represent Fiji in the Oceania competition, which is scheduled from the 25th to the 30th of this month. Luciana Tangida Kimbao, FBC Sports. Journalists at the FIFA World Cup press conference with France's Antoine Griezmann were told they had to speak French in an attempt to avoid questions about the strikers' future at Atletico Madrid. But Spanish reporter Pedro Morata found a cheeky way around the rule. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and a new media visit to a drone arena where drones are being taught by engineers to fly safely. That's coming up. Radio Fiji One, Radio Fiji One, Viti. In tonight's new media, we go inside the aerodrome where the future of flight takes shape and where engineers are simulating wind conditions to teach drones to fly safely. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. 
generally a rainy day with a fair bit amount of sunshine throughout the nation. Well, on the brighter side of things, we are a day away from the weekend. Taking the west, a fairly sunny day with light isolated showers. Eastwards from Pekha Suva, more of a rainy one with more expected later tonight. And up north, a sunnier one with brief showers. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 12.33 a.m. with high tide at 7.13 a.m. Sunrise at 6.35. For tomorrow, it's the lovely Friday and it's looking pretty clear. Good news, isn't it? Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest at 27 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, clearer conditions are likely to continue. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked who will win the FIFA World Cup opening match between Russia and Saudi Arabia. I think uh, Russia will win. Russia. Because they are a good team. I think Russia. It is a very expensive thing. Saudi Arabia, because a lot of uh, the players are. Uh, permissive, English permissive, uh, they play in the high level yeah, soccer teams. I think Russia will win because it's uh, their home ground. Lamont, in the world of the weird and the wonderful, Lamont, a father and a husband, found himself needing a hand after a workplace injury left him without a job. This is where his local food pantry stepped in. Recapping the main stories for tonight, a new mobile app has been launched to enhance government services. Two former WAF staff face major corruption charges. An accused murderer claims victim beat her and her children. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we're asking... Do you think police drivers should do more defensive driving courses? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day was taken by Apisai Mbukayaro from Doloi Suva. Beautiful shot of the sunrise this morning. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe. Good night. My name is Nan, I'm from Jesse, Freni North, Mashur, and I'm Radio Fiji 2 in Sabi Jaga Mashur. Radio Fiji 2 is the country. I'm from Sima Nakasi, I'm from Radio Fiji 2 in Sabi Jaga Radio Fiji 2 is the country. I'm Uncle King, Singer Toka Town, Taxi Driver, and I'm from Rugby Fame, and I'm from Radio Fiji 2 Fame. Radio Fiji 2 is the country.